Back in the morning, brew with you today for uh, Monday, and with us on the couch is Mihalis uh, Falotsos, who is uh, Department Chair of Computer Science and Professor at the University of New Mexico. Welcome to the show. Welcome back. Thank Good you. to have you here. Hello. You guys are having quite a visit over there, Amber. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> I'm fascinated. You're, you're a computer science professor. Right. And, uh, and it's just always interesting. You're doing so much interesting work with the private sector. Yes, and actually that's uh, one of the reasons that uh, I'm very excited to, to, to be here at uh, UNM is uh, we really want to see uh, the research that people do in, in labs to transfer out to technologies and uh, companies. And uh, we're trying to actively uh, encourage this to both professors and students. And I think this is, uh, as I was mentioning, this is like a, a whole, uh, the, the whole command that UNM now wants to really to see some entrepreneurship. Clearly, education is our first uh, role, and that's sure. not something to be diminished. But at the same time, sort of adding a little bit more towards uh, making technology useful and mm -hmm. uh, to either people directly or to companies is something that we're v very actively trying to, to do. And um, yeah, we're uh, trying to do various events, reach out to the community, to, to talk to people. We're working very closely with uh, people like uh, Lisa Atkins from uh, Pad Pipe. Um, uh -huh. Uh, Webb Johnson and uh, Bill Bice from the Verge Fund. So we're really trying to see how we can establish regular relationships, have, pe have them come and inspire our students, have our professors uh, go and talk to their companies and sort of share knowledge and information. That's a good partnership. I mean, you guys, it's more than just theory. You're, what you're doing is, is actually providing, it's going to end up providing jobs, it's going to provide a real tangible product. Can you give us some examples of of successful businesses that have come out of this? Yes, actually we have a part of the motivation or, or my experience with that is that we started a company with a graduate student in 2008 mm -hmm. and we sold it last November. So that was a very wow. happy outcome. We were all very happy with the, with the results and especially for our first major company to kind of have a successful exit, that was a pretty nice thing. So that kind of got me at least hooked and I said, okay, this is doable, this is fun. There is a lot of stress and a lot of work that goes with it, but uh, I would highly encourage it to my colleagues and students. Not necessarily everybody has to do it, or and maybe even some people are not cut out to do things. Some people prefer to sort of not be on the forefront or not talk to people that much. Well, we are geeks after all. But um, <laughs> we definitely think that there is a lot of people. Uh, a lot of the people in engineering, and actually that's a little bit of a misunderstanding. I think people always think of computer scientists are completely sort of isolated, not talking to other people. Mm -hmm. right. Th there is some of that, but I think there are a lot of people that are actually very outgoing people, fun people, and they could do very well in business as well. Mm -hmm. What strikes me is uh, it's an interesting environment that you work in. You have a big institution like UNM, but you have a fast-moving technology world in computer science. Are you able to reconcile both and get, get the institution to move quicker to respond to what you need? Do you understand what I'm asking you? Yes, I, I think so. Yeah. Uh, and, and overall, I think the institutions uh, are really help, uh, help by not sort of standing in the way and That's encouraging what I was people to just do things. As I mentioned before, at this point at UNM, there is definitely a very clear... Uh, uh, let's say mandate coming from above that uh, we want to see uh, entrepreneurship and technology transfer so uh, th there is definitely not a any major obstacles for people that want to pursue that on the contrary what I find is that it's pretty much more up to us let's say the people in computer yeah. science to really have these discussions in corridors have uh, have courses I would like to mention that uh, there is the distinguished professor Sulka Cecilia from the business school he has been doing a phenomenal job over the last 10 years having a UNM business competition and he's kind of raising funds, he's organizing the mentors and judges and, and I think getting more of that out in the public and sort of having people be aware of that I think will really help everybody involved. There are a lot of industries in, in computer science. Um, I noticed on, in, in, in your website Stop the Hacker mm -hmm. is all about website security. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? All right. I, I, I used to talk only about Stop the Hacker, but now that we sold the company, I don't talk about it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, so the, the idea there was to protect websites 
So the, the customer was the people that own websites. Mm -hmm. And the idea, the, the, the best way to summarize this is the, the software that we had developed is an antivirus for your website. The same way that you need to have something to protect your laptop, you also need something to protect your website uh, proper. Mm -hmm. And there are, uh, right now there are roughly 9,000 websites every day that get blacklisted by Google because they, they get hacked Oh. And then they put malware on the website. Mm -hmm. So with the intention of um, uh, infecting the visitors to the website. So, so basically oh good gosh. websites become uh, carriers of a disease. Yeah. Mm. So th this was a very interesting kind of take in the, in the whole malware propagation business. And uh, we saw this as a, as a need and we developed some nice software. Uh, the brilliant person behind the company was my student, Anirban Banerjee, who is now continues works with the, the company that acquired us, and he was phenomenal in m making everything happen. So... What are you working on now? Oh, it's a secret I cannot tell. A secret? No! <laughs> we want to know. No one's watching. Yeah. It's just us. Right, right. I, one of the things that we are looking into is try to see what kind of information we can extract from Facebook. Mm. and other social media and this now is moving the protection to, to the human and we're saying can I detect early signs of depression among people or, or maybe wow. if, if we follow the, the social activity of let's say soldiers in a, in a base can we detect people that will need uh, some early attention and sort of avoid mm. suicides and wow. things like this so this is very early so I cannot claim any major successes but I think That's things will happen really important work so it was an interesting day around the office, I bet. Always. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. fascinating. Nicholas, thank you so much for coming down and being on the show today. Thank you for having me. Fascinating Wonderful talking to you. To you. Uh, cutting edge stuff from UNM and uh, the uh, computer science department over there. We'll be back with a final cup on the Morning Brew after this.